Hi, I'm Random Tuesday, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through the various parts and pieces of my Megara cosplay from the game Hades. I'm going to talk about all of the various parts to this cosplay, as well as go into a little bit of detail about how I made the sections. If you want a more in-depth write-up or a pattern for this cosplay, check out the links down in the description below, or head over to my website, randomtuesday.com. So with that, let's get started. I went through a few different iterations on how I made the leggings on a lot of mistakes, but the final version was made out of blue and black spandex that I purchased from Blue Moon Fabrics. If you're looking for a direct link, again, check out the write-up down in the description below. For the gold detailing, I used the Yaya Han Gold Stretch Metallic Vinyl. To help stabilize the design, I used Wonder Under, uh, a bondable, fusible interfacing. There's a bunch of different varieties. Make sure uh, if you have the option to use a stretch version, because that'll make your life easier. And then I top stitched it in place using a stretch stitch on my sewing machine. After that, I airbrushed using Plaid FX, the copper metallic paint, to kind of both give a little bit of highlighting to the edging and also help kind of blend in the stitching so it was a little bit less obvious. I also did some airbrushing before I applied the gold vinyl on the base fabric of the blue, just to kind of give a little bit of shadow and shading around the edges of that gold design. For the top, I needed something with a lot of structure and stability, both to act as an anchor for the shoulder pieces and to keep the wing in place so that I could have a lightweight structure for it. So I opted for a fully steel boned corset. I used a, the reverse side of a black satin as the outer fabric, and the gold trim was just made out of that same gold metallic vinyl that I used on the leggings, braided into three sections, and then airbrushed for some detailing. I didn't want to have any lacing on the corset, as obviously you can't see lacing in the design, so instead my closure is a zipper on the side seam that I can hide in the un underneath the tunic section. The collar it was made in two parts, the base section of the chest and then the neck portion. The chest piece is a base of the same blue satin that I used for the tunic, and then the designs on it I ended up cutting out using my silhouette cutter uh, in a vinyl iron-on transfer. And then the edge is just made out of that same uh, vinyl spandex. I did add a little bit of airbrushing uh, before I applied the vinyl to kind of emphasize and give a little bit more dimension to that blue fabric, make the whole thing a little bit less flat. The neck piece, rather than making it out of foam, I wanted to make it out of fabric so that it would move with me while I was wearing the costume. So it's made out of a layer of the gold vinyl with an under layer of a, a thicker black spandex to just give it a little bit more structure. The whole thing then zips up in the back and I hid that seam between the collar and the neck piece underneath two strips of EVA foam wrapped in that gold fabric glued directly onto it. The medallion or oval in the center was made out of uh, EVA foam covered in warbler and then much like the rest of the costume painted with a variety of plaid effects paints. For the tunic, it's not it's not a toga. It's barely a chitin. It's not a toga. The tunic is made from a matte blue satin, kind of a royalish blue color, and then the trim is just a black satin. The basic overall shape is pretty much a rectangle that flops over the shoulder so that I only have seams at the side and no shoulder seam. To really emphasize the correct shaping and get it closer to the design, I folded and, and tucked various places and then stitched those folds in place to kind of keep them there because obviously the fabric wouldn't stay in place the way I'd wanted it to unless I forced it. The tunic stays secure on me by snapping to the corset in the front and the back as well as on the collar piece at the shoulder. For the belt I started with a base of two millimeter EVA foam and then an extra ring of two millimeter EVA foam around the edge for that sort of edge detailing. I then glued over the top of that the same gold spandex that I used for the leggings and various other places and added the detailing using a combination of Sharpies and Plat FX paints. The medallions were made out of EVA foam, same two millimeter wrapped in warbler, and then glued directly to a piece of elastic. And the whole belt closes at the front with just a little Velcro tab that I've hidden underneath that center medallion. The shoulders, like many of the other armor sections, were a base of two millimeter foam with additional sections of foam uh, around the edges to add the extra dimension and the design. I then wrapped the whole thing in warbler using the sandwich method. So basically the whole thing is like a complete warbler seal, uh, which also makes it means that the underside of it, which is slightly visible, looks just as nice as the top side. The spikes themselves, I did make out using a base of five millimeter foam. I learned that lesson the hard way. Two millimeter did not have enough structural integrity, but five millimeter did. And then I used the magical properties of the stickiness of Warbla to stick those spikes directly onto the shoulder pieces. To keep all of the pieces together, I used a series of three and a quarter inch O-rings, one O-ring on each side in the front, and then four D-rings in the back. 
I ended up going with a chain on the bottom curve section in the back because it was very hard to get something that didn't either bulge weird or completely reduce my range of motion because of the way the shoulders lift up and down. I then painted all of it using Plaid FX paints and a little bit more information about painting can be seen in the video that I made about Warbler Greaves. The colors are just a little bit different, but the techniques are pretty similar. To then secure the shoulder piece to the corset, I just glued a lot of Velcro on the back side of that center piece, and then it just Velcros directly to the front of that corset, and it actually remains pretty snug and secure. I, I wouldn't recommend doing like handstands, but as long as you're remaining vertical and, and, and right side up, it stays in place pretty well. For the left arm, this is, yes, for the left arm, I used a base of the blue spandex, same as the material for the leggings, and then I just wrapped a strip of blue spandex around the top of that. To preserve the shape so I didn't have to rewrap it every time I wore it, I actually stitched it in place, hiding the stitching underneath the layers of the spandex. So it was a lot of hand stitching, but the effect is that I don't really have to redo it every time I put it on. I did add a little bit of extra airbrushing kind of around those edges as I was wrapping it around to kind of highlight the shadows and give it a little bit more more depth and dimension and variety. For the right arm, I used for the underlayer the same base uh, bracer of spandex from the same as the material of the leggings with a little bit of airbrushing on it. And then the gold portion was made out of two millimeter EVA foam covered in that gold vinyl spandex with the designs then added on using a combination of permanent markers, Sharpies, and Plaid FX paints. It zips up with a hidden zipper in the sort of center seam in order for me to get it on and off snugly, but keeping that zipper kind of nice and disguised. One of the cool tricks you can do with a hidden zipper is that you can actually paint using Plaid FX or other fabric paints the outside of that hidden zipper to help it blend in with the overall colors of your costume. For the armband, I then just made a strip similar to the collar of a outer layer of that gold vinyl spandex and an inner layer of a thicker uh, regular spandex so that it can then stay nice and snug. I top stitched the edges down using the same uh, stretch stitch on my machine, and then I added some airbrushing around the edges. The greaves were made in a base of two millimeter EVA foam covered in warbler, uh, and they slip on and off with a hidden zipper in the back of them. For more information on how I made cosplay greaves using warbler, you can check out my video, which I did for my Zagreus greaves. The wig is made in two parts. I have a base wig that is a lace front and then a separate ponytail. Uh, I used great resources from Kimpatsu Cosplay, uh, which I thoroughly recommend. I've linked some of the videos down in the description and in the doobly-doo above that's definitely the technical name if you're looking for more information and resources on making a ponytail wig. The tiara was made in two layers of warbler rather than EVA foam because I wanted it to be thinner but still have the structure uh, which can be provided by kind of a double layer of warbler and then added the extra details with additional warbler and painted it similarly using plaid effects. The edges are made out of elastic to kind of help keep it a little bit snug and give it some wiggle room while I'm wearing it. Similarly, for the earring pieces, I made the spikes out of two layers of warbler that I then painted, and I keep them attached using my own earrings because I have a couple of uh, earrings. I just got some gold ones. And then I also uh, use um, tape, double-sided fashion tape or to pay tape or wig tape or whatever you want to call it, or you can use a prosthetic adhesive to just kind of stick it to the back of your ears and keep them in place. For the body paint on my face, I use a mix of white and light gray Kryolan aqua colors to kind of get that very lightish gray color. The lipstick was the NYX Liquid Suede in the color shade of Pink Lust, which seemed thematically appropriate. And then for the arms, the hands, the feet, I use uh, arm socks and toe socks and gloves from We Love Colors in their light gray color. I didn't try too hard to get that like slightly bluish tint that she has uh, because it was I tried, it was very, it didn't work. So I stuck with kind of a light gray. The nails themselves were painted using China glaze in the color Rose Among Thorns. For more information on how I do my face body painting with contouring and the highlighting, you can check out my Hecate video, which shows a little bit more of a step-by-step -step process. Uh, just swap out the blue for gray. Lastly, if you're looking to make the whip or the wing, you can check out the videos that I made on both of those pieces. I'm gonna point to both sides and then I'll be right. Uh, if you'd like more detail on making those. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for coming on this very long cosplay journey of making my Megara cosplay. 
If you're looking for more information, resources, or tutorials on this cosplay or anything else that I've made, check out my other videos on this channel, or of course, head over to my website, randomtuesday.com. And don't forget, I have a bunch of patterns, cosplay patterns, both on my website and over on Etsy. Links to all of this stuff is down below. Of course, please do the beautiful YouTube things of liking and subscribing to this channel and this video. It's super helpful and I truly appreciate it. And lastly, and never leastly, thank you to each and every one of my patrons, seriously, who made this cosplay a reality. I would not have been able to do this without you and all of your support. If you're able to do so, any monthly amount is truly appreciated. Thank you for watching.